Welcome back, everyone. Don't forget, tap that like and subscribe. As you can see here, we got that brand new Volvo. Special for special people. So I decided to do this voiceover now because YouTube always has copyright issues and keeps silencing my videos, music, and voice. If you see my other videos, if not, you better get to it. As you can tell, we jacked up the truck. We got a jack stand under there. We unbolted the tires. We're taking the tires off now. Keep in mind, this method is only for the new Volvos. This has uh, special items in the hub itself that aren't on the Freightliners and Internationals. So this method is only for Volvo. So with the tires off, we can go ahead and take off the drum. Be careful, that sucker is heavy. Looking at that tone ring right there, we can see that the wheel sill has been leaking. It's got a lot of oil around it. So this definitely needed to be replaced. This is not as bad as some of them could have been that have been soaking the brakes. If they were on the brakes, then let's go ahead and do those too. But in this case, we can reuse them. As of right now, we need to back off the brakes. So we're releasing the slack adjuster and turning it with these specialty tools so we can move the S-cam and make the brakes easier to take off. There are many methods to brake removal. This is just one of them and works out pretty good. I definitely recommend it. Safer way to go. All right, now, was that easy or what? That was impressive. I should get paid extra for doing this. So with the brakes off, I want to go ahead and check out the S-Cam. I want to find out how much free play it has, so I went ahead and checked it real quick. This one, very minimal. Definitely good to reuse. Now we're looking at the tow wheel again and seeing how bad it is. Best way to drain the hub, remove this little set screw. This is also the fill and drain for the hub. Don't worry about reusing this oil. You're gonna want clean oil every time. Right here, we're looking at all the tools needed. This is two and three quarters. We got a thingamajigger and a big old hammer, air hose, gun, we got it all right here. So we're gonna to wanna to take off that axle flange shaft. So on here, it has nuts, washers, and then a spacer, which aligns it perfectly into the bore. We're gonna need the hammer and the device to screw onto there to get rid of these little spacers. We're going to install these studs and then the sleeve removal tool onto them.
Definitely make sure that sucker is lined up. You don't want to go in off center. And you could probably guess the next step. We're gonna hammer the hell out of that thing. Now I do have these specialty tools that I use when I remove the spacers. They come in handy, and without them, eh, you can figure something else out. Once those are off, we can go ahead and remove the axle shaft and clean it up and prepare it to go in deeper. I like to check out the oil, make sure there's no bearing material in there, make sure it's not discolor discolored and milky or in any way contaminated. Once that's good, I move on. Now we're going to get out the seal for the actual flange. We're going to inspect the sealing surface, make sure there's no issues. Then we're going to move on to this clip, this retainer clip. All we got to do is pull them outward and it'll pop on out. What we're going to do now is get that socket on there and it's got 500 foot pounds on it so it's going to be a little big to remove. Don't forget, a little slap and tickle goes a long way. As you can tell, it does not want to move. We're going to need a little more muscle over here. Anyone got our back? You see, the secret here is to spin it like a TI video. So what I'm showing you right here is as we're spinning the nut, backing it off, it's backing off the hub.
All right, as that is backed off, we're gonna go ahead and remove this little retaining clip there. As you can see, we just picked it out, send it around, and it's gone. So once those two things are out, we're gonna go ahead and take out this third piece. As you can see, it only goes in one way. There's a flat spot on there. Then you're gonna give it a little shake like you're at an arcade, trying to get some coins out of the machine. That bearing will come right out. This is now the time to inspect them once they're clean and see if there's any pitting or discoloration on them. It could be time for replacement. Now what we're gonna do is take out that preset spacer cone. As you can see here, we got some top secret information. We're gonna put that hub back on the spindle. And what we're gonna do, use this fancy crowbar and pop the seal out. Let's just keep these between us. And now the best thing to do, clean it all up. Damn, look at that, bath time already. Part numbers? Yeah, we got them. Here you go. You're welcome. Oh damn, is that a brand new hub? Nah, she's just clean. That's right, we got that bearing in there, a little bit of oil, lube it up real nice. She spins like 24s on an Escalade. Nah, probably a Pontiac. Don't forget, you don't want too much oil on that seal. Otherwise, it's going to be way too loose on that spindle. You know what they say, when in doubt, lube it up. Lather that sucker up. Look at that, work in that shaft. And now we're gonna do everything in reverse. We got that hub on there, perfectly straight. We're gonna get that preset spacer on there. Now we're gonna throw that bearing in there. A couple hundred dollar bills in there, in case anyone finds it. See, it only goes on one way, into that little groove.
all in the nut itself, it tells you what the torque spec is. This one, 500 foot-pounds. As you can see right here, we got a little gap for our ABS sensor. So we're going to go ahead and push it forward so it touches the tone wheel. Because if you don't, you're going to get an ABS light right away. So there was a few holes around that nut. You gotta find out which one lines up and that will be the one the top of that retaining clip goes into. As you can see, we go the extra mile and clean up that tone ring and make sure nothing causes the ABS light to occur on this wheel end. Now you're going to want to check out these grooves and make sure there's no issues whatsoever that would disturb this thing from sealing. If it's all good, slap that sucker in there and let's get the sucker moving. At this point, grab your shaft and shove it in there. Line it up with the holes. You may have to lick, lift it up just a little bit, otherwise it'll slide right on in. Now because these spacers have been on there so long, they are grooved and they don't just slide on easy. So we're gonna have to hit them in there.
So what we're doing right here is lining up the nut, the top flat part of the nut, with the top flat part of the hub, just in case the driver wants to use a chrome cover over these axle shaft uh, covers. If they do, they're gonna be grateful that we did this. So we just do this every time, just in case. So this hub will take one full quart of hub oil. Go ahead and lube up the threads of all the studs to stop corrosion from building up or any type of buildup from occurring on the hub studs themselves. As you can see, the brakes were already set up and ready to go. We got those rollers back on. Now we're just gonna pick up the brakes. And as you can see here, put them into place and they fall right into place. It's perfect, right? Now you want to make sure that that large clip, that the opening is facing towards the front of the truck. And now get ready for it because that drum is heavy. If you haven't done so, drink some coffee, drink a monster, summon some inner energy, and lift that sucker up into place. Now when putting these tires on, it's very important to remember where your valves are. Always put them 180 degrees away from each other. As long as they're opposites, they'll be easier for the driver.
Now we can go ahead and adjust the brakes, release the slack adjuster, and then we're going to go ahead and get the brakes to touch the drum and back it off half of a turn. That's all you need. So having a truck with a dump valve with a suspension dump is the best way to go because you could just go inside, use the dump like we're doing right here. And as you see, we're gonna go back out. It's gonna lower it. We're going to remove that jack as a suspension deflates. See, just that easy that we can go ahead and raise the suspension. It'll be just like new. So much easier not using a jack and only using the dump feature. Using a jack stand, that's all you need. And of course, you can't forget, torque it down 450 to 500 foot-pounds. So what do you guys think? Pretty easy, right? You got this. Parking lot, pilot, doesn't really matter.